I have two checkbooks, one for my West Coast marriage and one for back east. It's difficult to take care of so many lies, so I put them on index cards in my lie box. <sighs> I'm ready. <laughs> When I was first reading the diaries when I was younger, what interested me were, was the way she described her world. And, and I think that might have been also true of, of other, my contemporaries who were reading, and, and subsequently, because she, she describes a sort of magical world where you know, everyone she met was so creative and was doing such interesting things, and she was able to describe them in such an interesting way, and it gave you this kind of... I think, sort of view into a world that you might want to inhabit. Um, but in exploring the material for this show, sort of thinking, yes, this would, this would be a good thing because of the music in, in her world, because of her father and brother, I began to understand much more her very strange psychology <laughs> and the way that um, music was so integrated both into her neurosis and into her creativity. Um, her father, who, who was a composer and pianist, was had also abandoned her as a child, but also, it seems, had sexually abused her. So her, her notions around sexuality and sensuality uh, and around um, creativity were all so tied up with music. It just seemed the perfect subject, actually, yeah. Maida came up with the idea of Anaisnian, doing something about her. And strangely, uh, when I first left drama school, I worked as a dresser at the comedy theatre, and the wardrobe master there was a huge fan of Anaisnian, and he introduced me to her books then. And I sort of came, became a bit fascinated by her then, and that was back in about 1980. 1984 so she's been there in the back of my mind through all those years and strangely when when Maisel mentioned her to me I also had reacquainted myself with the wardrobe master who now lives in Australia um, so it all just seemed right in a way <laughs> Are you intrigued by the kind of um, the theater part of this project and, and the, the sort of content, what, what, what it's getting at? I am intrigued as to how it's going to pan out because it's my first time with uh, Ismena Collective 
and I haven't seen any of the shows yet. Um, so I don't know how it's going to look. And I'm really looking forward to experiencing that. As an actor, I think you have to like the person that you're playing. And you, cer and you certainly have to have sympathy for her and for why she behaved in the way that she did. If I didn't like her as an actor, I wouldn't be able to play her. It would be impossible. You have to find the humanity within the human being in order to play the person in a sympathetic way. Find the reasons for why she was who she was. And that, that might only be m my thoughts about why she was who she was. It probably is not the reality at all of why she was who she was. But I have to f find my way into her that way. My two, my two favourite pieces are the Ich Grohle Nicht uh, by Robert Schumann and uh, from the Dichte Liebe Heinrich Heine and also the uh, Debussy's Selextas and I think they're beautiful uh, in two very, very different ways. Um, ich Grohle Nicht is very passionate and a realisation of, you know, um, you know, the woman who know, knows what or knows what goes on and and deeply passionate and is sung throughout the song and very heartfelt in that sense but whereas uh, um the french song is more um just very beautiful and s serene and um yeah beautiful pieces <laughs> Musicians, singers, actors all have different processes. Um, I suppose the the closest the closest to an actor will be a, a, a soprano. She'll have a similar process uh, to an actor, but still it will be very different. Um, I think the relationship with a musician or musicians will be a relationship with the actual cello and the piano I think that's where the relationship will be so they will be like the other people on stage I have a sense of all that I leave out the lacunae especially the dreams the hallucinations also the lies are left out a desperate necessity to embellish so I do not write them down. The journal is therefore a lie. What is left out of the journal is also left out of my mind. At the moment of writing, I rush for the beauty. I disperse the rest out of the journal, out of my body. I would like to come back like a detective and collect what I have washed off. 